life doesn't happen to you, it happens for you. Um, and that really taught me to look for the meaning behind every challenge or every chapter, every um, negative thing that happened in my life. Um, and it, because I was looking for that meaning, it made the so-called suffering so much more valuable. Valeria Lipovetsky, we are so excited to have you on the show. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to chat. You are such an accomplished human being. You have over like 1.7 million subscribers on YouTube, 1.7 million TikTok followers, over 2 million Instagram followers. You are model turned content creator, a podcast host, a mother of three, a designer. Did I miss anything? <laughs> No, that sounds like a lot. Wow. It is a lot. <laughs> so it's really good for you. Tell us a little bit about how you came about into your career and kind of your journey there. Yeah, so it's a very interesting uh, story because I never really understood social media or planned to get into it. Um, it very much showed up for me from a place of I guess, as a self-development project in a way. So I, as you mentioned, I was modeling. I started modeling at the age of 15. And I was modeling uh, full-time up until I met my husband and got married, which was about 21, very young. And uh, when I got married, I've realized that, okay, I can't really continue doing this career with traveling and constantly moving around. So I was looking at other interests that I had and one of those interests was uh, nutrition. So I started building this idea for myself that I'm going to go get my holistic nutrition diploma and start a business. Um, and I did that. I followed an interest. And um, it was a wonderful two, three years. And when I finished school and I decided to start looking uh, to open a practice and started seeing people, I've realized how much I hated working with people. <laughs> Um, which is a bit devastating when you've been building this idea in your head for three, yeah. four years, right? So um, it was very uh, interesting time for me because I was thinking, okay, how can I make sure that these, this education is not really going to waste? And I do love sharing the information that I had. So I then decided to look on what's going on on the internet. Now, mind you, when I was at that point, I already had two kids. So I was very removed from social media because I was do adulting, right? I didn't really yeah. get into, didn't really understand social media so much. So when I started looking into it, I decided, okay, I'm going to start a blog where I can post recipes and do different things around nutrition and wellness. Um, and I did that. But what I've realized and it was 2016, 17, that it was, I'm a little late to the game. Starting a blog in 2016 felt like I very much missed the boat. So um, after experimenting with the blog, I got very interested with the idea of building a community um, and putting myself out there. And um, I think that's when I started looking and exploring into other platforms like YouTube and Instagram. And when I say earlier that it was kind of a self-development project is because I was absolutely mortified by the idea of putting myself out there and exposing myself to that extent. I had my background in modeling and I was very comfortable in front of the camera, but I wasn't talking. I wasn't really showcasing my personality. Um, yeah. And that to me was very scary because you open yourself up to judgment and other people's opinions. But I think that fear and that nervousness was what pushed me forward to do it because I've recognized that these are things that I want to break in myself. I was at that point 26, 25. Um, and, and yeah, so I started doing it from that place of just being, you know what, 
at this age, I'm a little too old to care this much. So let's go to the deep end, you know, do a little sink or swim experiment and just get myself on social media and hope for the best. And now we're here. We we love a good experience of pushing ourselves out of our comfort zone. It's That's always where the best things happen. Yeah, yeah. I think that I enjoyed the aspect of not knowing what it's going to bring. That naivety, right? That ignorance, if you can call that. It was very, um, it, was, it was so pure and so fun and so exciting and yes, scary, but I'm very glad that I followed my intuition and those butterflies that I mis- mistaken back then to fear. Yeah. I was listening to an interview that you did on your husband's podcast and you were talking about how you kind of self-taught yourself. Like you literally looked up on YouTube, which is funny because actually I did a similar thing with graphic design. I was like, I want to, I love design. I want to learn how to do this. And I looked it up on YouTube. Love YouTube. So much information out there. But tell us a little bit about that. I mean, people probably think that like just from the get go, you had a professional person helping you with everything, but that was not the case. That was not the case. Um, I'm really happy that people think that because I stopped taking it as an insult. To me, it's now a compliment, right? That (laughs) I managed to make it all look so easy and Um, and professional. But yeah, I started on YouTube. That was the main platform that I started on once I decided to get into social media. So I didn't share with my husband what I was doing because I didn't know what I was doing. Um, And I decided to find time during the day when my kids were in daycare or when they were sleeping to learn how to use YouTube in order to understand YouTube. And um, it's It's such an amazing, we're so lucky that we have that type of access to the amount of information and education online. I literally was searching the silliest things, right? Like how to download a software or how to upload a video to YouTube, how to title, what's SEO. Um, And I really started from the basics Um, and I've learned how to do it. And I was able to maintain my curiosity and maintain my workflow with the skills that I've learned on YouTube. And then once I started making money and was able to reinvest, uh, I right away got an editor because let me tell you, it was not something that came naturally to me. I remember when I did um, a little scan of, you know, how I spend my time analyze my my time, um, I've realized that I'm filming for maybe an hour, but I'm editing one video for like eight hours. And I sometimes like to go back and watch those, you know, initial videos. And let me tell you, the editing is just very humbling. There was nothing, there was nothing remarkable there. So, um, so yeah, I'm very grateful that I was able to get an editor to help me out with that. But I did love the I love the fact that I did and touched every point of my business myself first. So when I brought a person in, I knew exactly how their day looks like. I knew what they're supposed to do. Um, and you're able to be a better leader that way. So very happy that I got the opportunity to do all of that. It's so crazy how there's just anyone who seems to be an overnight success never is like people always think oh that just like fell into their laps and what they don't see is the hours and hours of work that's put in behind the scenes and oh, like yeah. you know the pe- I feel like influencers and bloggers and especially in the lifestyle and fashion realm get like kind of a bad rap sometimes like oh their jobs are so easy like all they have to do is post pictures of themselves or post videos of themselves And Mm -hmm. they don't see the amount of work that goes into it. No, not at all. I think that now there's a little bit more understanding um, around content creators because now there's so many of them and everyone is touching it to a degree. For some people, it's full-time jobs. For others, it's like a side hustle. But people starting to get a taste of what it is. And it's extremely draining, not only physically but mentally and energetically Um, and even if you really want to or even honestly if you're talented if you're a talented storyteller 
that's just one aspect. You know, it's truly such an entrepreneurial role to play because you are the storyteller, you are the marketing person, you're the production yeah. person, you're the stylist, like you do it mm-hmm. all, right? And um, it's it's very, very challenging, but also very cool. And for me, what I appreciate about content creators these days are just the amount of work that they put into their content, but also how they're building their brand, personal brands for longevity. Because I've been in this profession for seven years now, and I can't even tell you how many overnight success came and and went away, right? But there's, if you really think about it, there's not a lot of people that stuck around. So yeah. these days for me, it's less about this virality and, you know, doing anything I can for attention. It's more like, how do I really build that longevity in the business? Because I see myself in this industry f- for a very long time. So it's yeah. kind of like the industry is changing. People look at it in a different way. Um, you have to be business savvy, surround yourself with good people and um, just really be patient and consistent. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a really good point that content creators are looking toward longevity instead of becoming viral or being an overnight sensation. Because the fact is, too, with social media, the landscape changes every day. So the only thing you can do is just stick around for the ride, really, at a certain point. Exactly. Exactly. Learning to pivot and experiment and not to take yourself too seriously, uh, which is a work on its own, right? It's very, nothing teaches you more about yourself than social media. To me, I feel like I've been going to therapy from the day I started. Social media and my community is truly a mirror for me about myself. And I've learned so much about uh, how I operate and how I think. Uh, through that. So I'm very grateful for that. But you definitely have to be very self-aware in order to maintain um, to maintain just being part of this industry. I think it's honestly a talent of yours to be able to be authentic and raw and use social media as a sort of therapy to feel more like yourself. Whereas I think other people who maybe don't have that talent use it as a way to cover up their true selves and show like a certain side of them that they want people to see. So I think it kind of like depends on what your strengths are and what you're able to put out to the world. Because like, I still find that hard. I don't really post my face a lot on my page, but it's very hard for me to like show my true self online. Like I'm just not good at it, you know? And some people really are. I feel like you've come across so authentic in your videos and that's what draws people to them. Thank you. That's really sweet of you. I appreciate that. Um, but I also, I also want to tell you that although it felt like being on camera on social media with short form and on YouTube felt easy for me in terms of just being myself, podcast, on the other hand, is kicking my butt. Like <laughs> if I thought that I am so vulnerable and so authentic and all these things, podcast is really is truly putting me to the test. And that's why I'm so passionate about uh, my podcast and developing myself as a podcaster because it makes me feel so uncomfortable. And it made me realize that the level that I've been giving on social media, the level of vulnerability and rawness is wonderful. But now to me, it feels like the surface. And the podcast showed me that there is just so much more so now I'm on this journey of being like, okay, we've got to tap into that one. Um, so just so you know, it's, it's very much practice. And I'm going to develop those muscles and that, um, you know, I'm going to break that wall. Uh, so it's very much possible. So don't, yeah. so don't think that it's, it, not everything's going to come naturally. But, um, but I think that's when kind of going forward and working on it. And again, right, being consistent. Uh, and intentional will will get you somewhere. Even if I don't hit here, but I hit here, that's that's pretty good, you know. Still higher than you were before. Yep, exactly. No, I 
I think that is great advice. And you clearly are a highly motivated person. I love that it seems like every time you get relatively comfortable, you're like, all right, got to push myself even more. So I think your answer to the question of the show is going to be a really good one. I'm I'm excited to hear it. What is the best advice that you've ever gotten? So it's not an advice that was given to me. It's an advice that I picked up that was given to someone else. Hey, it works. (laughs) But it very much resonated with me. And I didn't understand to what extent until today. But I've heard this one very successful person. And I I don't even remember who it was. But someone that I regarded as this is a very aspirational, inspirational person. He said no one knows what they're doing. And to me, when I first heard it, I was like, "Mm, like, what does it really mean? I mean, people know what they're doing, but with time and with the years and with every project that's been presented in front of me and big decisions that I needed to make, I I kept going back to it. I think because it very much uh, touched a weakness of mine, which is perfectionism which is waiting until I have all the answers and all the steps written down in front of me that I'm, you know, opening the door or taking that step. And every time I was faced with that, with a decision, I would always go back to no one knows what they're doing. No one knows what they're doing. They're doing it and then they're learning how to do it. Um, And surprisingly, that very simple saying just helped push me into new horizons and opening new doors and things that I absolutely had no idea um, how I'm going to manage or do. But it taught me so much and it taught me to stop overthinking. I'm still battling with that. It's not the perfect answer, but still battling with that. But it's still, it helps me to balance my over analyzing and over perfectionist, you know, brain. I think that's such beautiful advice. It's such a beautiful idea. It reminds me of the first episode we did of this podcast and Victoria Brown, who is um, a wonderful person and she's a content creator as well. Her piece of advice was if your first draft is perfect, you started too late. And it Mm -hmm. reminds me of what you said, because like really anyone who's ever accomplished anything did not do it perfectly ever. Like literally even experts at certain things are not doing it perfectly. And yet we have this idea that we're like fighting against all the people who know what they're doing. And I think that's such a like relevant reminder to be like, no one does. Just very simple. You know, it's kind of like reminds me of the idea of when you on stage of, you know, envision everyone's naked. It's the same thing. You're kind of envisioning everyone like no one knows what they're doing. So I might as well do my thing. And figure no, it it's out. true. It ta- it humbles you and it helps you like take the competitive nature out of your relationship with everyone else as well. Yes. Yeah. I think that's such beautiful advice. Do you have any favorite quotes or like mantras that have always stuck with you throughout your life? I think one that stuck with me the most um, is that life doesn't happen to you. It happens for you. Um, And that really taught me to look for the meaning behind every challenge or every chapter, every um, negative thing that happened in my life. Um, And it, because I was looking for that meaning, it made the so-called suffering so much more valuable, right? So when you go through it and you understand the meaning of it because it's happening for you, it feels like it's it's just like it's okay that it's challenging. It's okay that it's sad. It's okay that it's bad because it's bringing so much to my life, um, and it prepares me for all these wonderful things that are going to come to my life. Um, so that's something that a mantra that I very much think about and follow, um, and it served me ten years ago. It's serving me now, and I'm sure that it's going to serve me for the rest of my life. Do you have any particular instance or particular story that you remember kind of thinking through that and reshaping the way you were thinking about the trial, whatever it was, into something that was actually working to your benefit? 
Oh my God, so, so many. Um, I remember even taking it back to my modeling days. I was, I was always very, it's a very insecure industry to be in. Um, I mean, it feeds your insecurities. And I remember when I landed my big job, I landed a job with Victoria's Secret. I just couldn't believe it. Like to me, I was like, I can't, you know, I don't even know how that happened. And the day came and I was on set and I completely blew it because my insecurity was feeding the whole energy of the room. And I just couldn't get myself to show up and to do my job. It was that simple. Um, and there on set, after shooting one photo, they really nicely were like, thank you so much for coming. Um, we'll, you, you can go home. And, you know, for, for me, it was just my, I, literally, I, everything just turned black. And I just couldn't believe how I had this opportunity in my hands. And I just let it slip, um, especially coming you know, from a small city. I was in New York. It was a big deal for me. And um, it took me a long time to get over that because I was so disappointed in myself. But through that experience, I've learned so much about the weaknesses that I have, the things that I needed to work on to make sure that when the next thing happens, I am, I feel worthy to receive it. I show up as myself. And um, it was it was wonderful. And it also helped me to shift away from that profession because I've realized that, you know what, there's so many things that I need to develop in myself that I won't be able to do being part of this industry because it feeds just the wrong things. So yeah. it helped me to then look for other interests and other, other things. And, you know, that led me to nutrition and to social media. So it was constantly just like, what is this experience trying to teach me? Like, what is it for? I wasn't sitting there being like, oh my God, I blew it. This is it. And constantly relieving that moment. Um, instead of relieving it, it was more of like, what, are, what is it trying to tell me? What am I missing here? Um, and that, uh, that quote just really carried me through it. And there's just so many other examples because, again, it's just so... It's so relevant to the smallest things and the biggest things. And um, yeah, just helps me to keep going. Yeah, that's a beautiful story. And it did. It, it led you to the career you were supposed to have and something that you were supposed to do that was has clearly brought you a lot more joy and fulfillment than it seems modeling was. Absolutely. So I think... It, it really is a quote that can be applied to every aspect of our lives. Is there a quote that you carry that oh reminds gosh. you? Oh, the show's being mantra? flipped. I think I po actually posted it recently on my page that says that, like, something to the extent of, is ha if happiness is always somewhere else, then it will never be where you are. And I've been thinking about that mm -hmm. a lot. I feel like we assign our happiness to a future date, to a future way we look to when we have a family to when we have a certain promotion a job whatever it may be and we delay it and delay it and then we realize after days and years that we've never been happy because we're waiting for some future thing that's constantly changing to a goal further and further away and so it mm -hmm. just reminds me kind that. of to find happiness now and here in this moment because that's all life is is moments pieced together I love it. I love the reminder of coming back to the present uh, because yeah. I think that's the biggest that's the biggest challenge for us as a society, right? Because there's so much going on at all times. A lot of us constantly think about the past and think about the future, um, and that just keeps all of us busy not living in the moment. So I love that quote. Man, I wasn't ready for, I've never had someone ask me about my favorite quote on the show. So you are the first, Valeria. Oh, I love um, that. I love being the first. <laughs> yes. Going back to you, though. Okay, so now we want to hear the advice you would give. You have such an interesting background of being born in Russia, grew up, then you moved to Israel, then to Canada, then you came to the States. You had quite the journey. You were raised predominantly by your mother, who seems like she was just an it is just an incredible woman. Mm -hmm. So 
If you were to look back at that younger Valeria, now having accomplished all that you have, and give her any advice or any wisdom to help her get through, what would you say to her? It would be probably to trust the process um, and to, yeah, just trust the process. That simple. Um, because I think that a lot of the times um, I was just kind of waiting for if I, you know, make a, made a certain step or made a certain decision, then, you know, that thing that I was working for just going to happen right away. Um, and we get very demotivated when something doesn't show up the way we envisioned it. So Absolutely. trusting the process uh, would probably save young Valeria a lot of uh, a lot of sleepless nights and a lot of disappointment because I ended up getting and becoming more than I imagine I would, right? So um, that would be, that would be it. That would be that simple advice. So what, did you have a picture in your head when you were younger of what your life would be like and how is it different? You know, it's funny because I grew up and my mother, who is a huge influence in my life, and as I get older, and especially now that I'm a mother, I've realized how big that influence is, but she always told me, you're not going to be in this country that you are growing up in. Back then it was Israel. She always told me, you're going to be somewhere bigger. You're going to have a big life. And even when I used to come to her and tell her, mom, I want to get a tattoo because Brittany has a tattoo or I want to get, you remember with the Pamela Anderson, she had the tattoo around her. Uh, oh, yeah. I was all about it, right? <laughs> and she told me, how could you get this tattoo? You're going to go to Hollywood. You're going to walk the red carpet with this beautiful gown and you're going to have this tattoo. And I was like, oh, my God, you're right. This is, you know, conversations that we would have when I was 15, 16 years old sitting in a small town in Israel n with no prospects of going anywhere. So it was just the way she helped me to envision this limitless life has been a huge a huge thing for me um and i think that to answer your question i i never i always thought that i will find my voice and find myself because that was the thing that i really cared about you know i didn't to me a big life didn't mean, or successful life didn't mean having a lot of money or being famous. It was more about finding that voice because I didn't have that voice as a child. I was very insecure. And I, that was a big pain point for my mother because she really tried to do everything she could to shake it off out of me. And um, I think even getting into modeling, that was in her way to put me in an environment that made me face that fear. Yeah. So for me, that was the big thing. I'm like, am I ever going to find my identity? Am I ever going to be confident enough to stand, you know, on my own and, and to feel my value? And obviously it wasn't as deep back then the way I describe it now. But now that I'm, I'm here, I understand that that's what I was yearning for. You know, that's what I was looking for. So I didn't. Um, so for me, I mean, it's. I'm still on the journey. I haven't reached it fully and it's going to take a very long time, probably the rest of my life to get there. But I am extremely grateful and um, extremely grateful to, to become this version of myself that, you know, the younger, younger me couldn't even fathom that that's going to happen. That is such a beautiful story. I, always I'm so inspired and in awe of people who do amazing things. And most of the time, I feel like you can link it back to even just one person. In your case, it was your mom who really just even made you believe that that would be possible. Like a lot of kids just they don't have one person rooting for them and telling them that they could be anything more than just, you know, like everyone else in their community or everyone else that they're around. And it's so incredible to me that your mom was like, no, 
you're going to do big things. And she, I mean, she didn't really know for sure, but she just believed in you. She believed, but you know what? She also modeled that. And I think that's very important. And I think yeah. that's why I work so hard. My husband and I work so hard and really are, we're very open in our household about our careers and about the moves we're making because my mother modeled it um, in, in a way, right? She, she left home when she was 21 with a two-year-old. She left Russia with no money, no language. Then she was looking for a better life, moving to Canada with my 10-year-old brother. Like she was always pushing and yeah. she never stopped. And no matter how many people around her try to tell her that what she has is enough, this is it, this is the best. Why would you go into the unknown? For her, it was unacceptable. And I think that it's one thing when you hear it, it's another thing when you see it. So Absolutely. that is a huge lesson for me as a parent and something that I'm hoping I'm show showing to my kids. I mean, grit like that and a resilience like that, you could spend your entire life teaching your kids about, but mm -hmm. seeing it firsthand, you, I think you're absolutely right, is what truly changes kids and it changes the people who are looking up to others. Yeah. So I... I think your story is beautiful and I think your content is raw and amazing and you're just so talented and I love your entire motto of life of just always getting out of your comfort zone and doing things that make you feel scared and nervous and it's become something amazing. So thank you so much for sharing with us and sharing your light and your knowledge and just who you are. You have indeed in my mind found your voice and you're using it for good. Thank you so much. That means a lot to me. I appreciate it. Of course. Of course. Last thing is tell us where we can go to follow you, to keep up with all of your work, to listen to your new podcast that I'm sure you are doing great at. Let us know how we can support. Yes, I am on literally every platform out there under Valeria Lipovetsky. <laughs> so YouTube, TikTok, Facebook, uh, Instagram. And uh, yes, I am. I have a podcast. I'm a podcaster now. And the podcast is called Love Not it. Alone. And I'm. Uh, you can find it on any platform that has podcasts on them and on YouTube. Beautiful. Valeria, thank you so much, so much for joining us. And to everyone listening and watching, we hope you enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to subscribe to The Shift or follow me on Instagram at Quotes by Christy. And we will see you next time.